I remember when I was beginning my spiritual practice many years ago, learning an important lesson from a wise old Buddhist master. When I had first heard of deep listening and the importance of silence, I asked him to talk a little about silence as the spiritual pathway. And he leant back and smiled with total contentment and delight and simply said, ah, the 21 layers of silence. 21? 21 levels of silence? Of course, the 21 is a symbolic number. He was not referring to levels of intensity or differences of approach which could be numbered so that we could test whether we were making progress from level one to two, three and four and so on. This was simply a symbolic number saying that silence continually unfolds the hidden reality, the hidden mystery of life. And we will continue, as the revelation continues, to be, understand just a little more fully the nature of silence and therefore the nature of aloneness. We can almost imagine our little boy feeling this was equally strange, that we would want to devote our lives to silence, to different levels and intensities of silence. And perhaps not just the little boy has the impression that if we are to reach our homeland, the space within ourselves where we are naturally at home, then we must cut ourselves off from other people, from communication with others, from involvement in the world and relationships within the family. That obviously doesn't make sense, although that is a path by which a few people in our human family are called, the vast majority of us are not. And so, how do we solve this? The Upanishads, the wonderful scriptures of the Hindu tradition, give us an explanation and an indication in many of the different books. But I've chosen to take one from the Maitri Upanishad and just read this small passage to you. God is sound and silence. It is the silence that is the end of the journey, a silence of joy where pain and suffering are no more. It is through sound that we go to silence, the silence of God. For God is both sound and silence. God is both, or Brahman in the Hindu tradition, the name for the ultimate reality, is both sound and silence. So this world of sound and communication with other people is not an obstacle to reaching the inner silence, which is this experience of joy, of the ultimate reality that we are all seeking. Sound is not an obstacle to this. Sound actually leads us to it. It's for this reason that in many of the sessions that you will have attended of meditation in different groups, Zen meditation or yogic meditation, at the beginning and the end of the meditation practice, a gong 
will be sounded. It's not merely a signal for the beginning and the end of the prayer practice. It is an experience of the sound that leads to the silence. And we are advised to follow the sound as it dies away into the stillness and let it be an invitation to follow the sounds of our life into the inner silence. Just listen to the vibration now. You never, of course, strike a meditation gong, an act of violence. No, you invite the gong to speak. So let us do that now. For Brahman, God, is both sound and silence. And through sound, we go to silence, the end of the journey, the silence of joy.